Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. Tzadi Aleph continues the sugya of carrying between different types of Rishuyas Hayachid without an Eir of Chatseris. The Gemara is still discussing where an Eir of Chatseris is required and where it is not. We've seen a previous Machok is Rav and Shmuel. The Gemara will bring a proof to Rav. The Gemara then refers back to the Mishnah, which had three way Machlekes Tanayim. The Gemara will explain each of those three opinions. Rabbi Huda gives his understanding of the three opinions in the Mishnah. The Gemara brings a proof to Rabbi Huda. And then the Gemara launches another Machlekes between Rav and Shmuel, and the rest of the Daf uh, expresses different proofs to that Machlekes. So, first of all, Rav and Shmuel had, had a previous Machlekes discussing, according to the opinion of the Chacham, which you're allowed to carry only within one roof itself. You can't carry to the next neighboring roof. That Rav had said that you're only allowed to carry within four amas of the roof. You cannot carry the entire roof itself. So the Gemara says, I'm going to bring a proof to that. There's a b'risa, which quotes the opinions of uh, the Chachamim and Rabbi Meir in this Machlokas. And it clearly says that the Chachamim in Metalton by El Abbasach Arba Amas. You're allowed to carry within one roof, but only within four amas of that roof, not further than that. Clear proof to Rav. Okay, now, Rabbi Huda wants to explain the three opinions in the Mishnah. Now, this is a complex explanation, and there are a number of different factors you have to take into account. The sugya is different types of Rishos HaYachad, when are you allowed to carry between them, and when do you need to have an Erev Chatzerus in order to be able to carry between them. So the different types of Rishos HaYachad under discussion are a house, a bias, a roof, a Chatzer, and a Karfeif. So a roof, we know what that is. A Chatzer is a yard in front of the house. A Karfeif is an area that's not really used by humans. It's a storage area or it's a fenced-in field. We're talking about one which is less than 2,000 amas, so it's a Rishos HaYachad, then 5,000 amas, it's a Rishos HaYachad, it's not a Karmelis. You're allowed to carry within it. The question is carrying between Rishos, from one Rishos to another, from house, Chatzar, roof, or Karafeif, without an air of Chatzar. So when is that allowed? So there's a number of factors which may influence the Halach here. First of all, there's the question of the usage of these three regions. Do they have similar usage? House is used often all the time. It's the most common usage. As a matter of fact, house is agreed by everybody that to carry an object from a house into any other Rishos requires an Erev Chatzeris. House is a different usage level than any of the other ones. A Chatzer and a roof have the same level of usage. It's used intermittently. It's used for various different functions, but it's not used all the time. A Karfev is a third level. It's not used that much at all. So we have three levels. We have houses. One, Chatzer and Karfev, Chatzer and Gag, Chatzer and roof, yard and roof are considered the same middle level. And a Karfev is the third level. Now, as we shall see, it may be a bigger problem to carry from one level to another level without an air of chatzeris. That might be one factor, the level of use. Another factor is the ownership. If different people own it, so there will be a bigger problem to carry from one owner's area to another's. And the third factor is height. As we shall see, there's at least one opinion that says you cannot carry from a lower chatzer, from a lower rishas yachad to a higher rishas yachad, or vice versa. So those are three factors. We'll have to figure out which ones are significant and which ones are not. And the Gemara uh, is discussing the Mishnah. The Mishnah had three opinions, Reb Shimon, Rabbi Meir, and the Chachamim. So Reb Shimon is the simplest of all. Reb Shimon says that... Uh, None of these factors really matter except for a house. A house is considered a complete usage. You cannot carry from a house into somebody else's house or into someone else's chatzar. Uh Without an air of chatzeris, you have to have an air of chatzeris from a house. Everybody agrees to that. Shimon uh, holds that this is the only time you need an air of chatzeris. But everybody agrees in that situation you have to have an air of chatzeris. Aside from that, Rosh Shimon says there are no problems. You don't need an air of chatzeris anywhere. A kli which began Shabbos in a yard, you're allowed to carry to any other type of Rosh Hashanah besides for a house. And a kli which began Shabbos in a karfeif or in a roof, all these places you're allowed to carry from one to the next, no issues. That's Rosh Shimon's opinion. Now, Rabbi Meir holds a similar opinion, but he's machmir um, in two ways. First of all, he says... You cannot carry from one usage area to another usage area. So you can't carry from a roof to a karfeif, or from a chutzar to a karfeif, or from a karfeif to either of those, because those are different levels of usage. What about from a chutzar to a roof, or vice versa? Those are the same level of usage. So here Rabbi Meir has another halacha, and he says because there are different heights, you can't carry from one to the other. There's a gzera that you may end up doing an isa and rosh So again, Rabbi Huda has two chumras. He says you cannot carry 
from uh, any of these Rishuyos to a different type of Rishus. You can carry from Chatzar to Chatzar, you can carry from roof to roof, you can carry from Karfif to Karfif, but not between Rishuyos. And the reason is because he has two Chumras. One is that type usage type makes a difference, and therefore Karfif is different than the other two. And one is that height makes a difference, and therefore Chatzar and roof are, uh, therefore the roof is different than the other two. Okay. Fine, that's Rabbi Meir's opinion. So far, so good. Now, the Chachamim have a much more complex opinion. Their opinion separates roofs from everything else. They say as follows. They say a roof, each roof is considered to be a separate show, so you can't even carry from roof to roof. You can't carry from roof to roof because of the houses below it. it separates each roof into its own show, so you can't carry from roof to roof. But that's like carrying from house to house. Roof to roof is like from house to house. However, aside from that, you can carry from Rishos to Rishos. They don't hold that height makes a difference. So they say you can carry from roof to chutzr. You can carry from chutzr to chutzr. Again, chutzr to chutzr is not a problem. Only roof to roof is a problem. Roof to roof counts as house to house. Chutzr to chutzr doesn't count like house to house. Even roof to chutzr is not a problem, even if it's different ownerships. Karvev, though, is different. Karvev, the Chachamim do hold that because it's a different usage than Chatzar and Ruf, you cannot carry from Karfif to the other two. So it comes out that the Chachamim hold of one Chumra that the other two don't hold of, one Chumra over even Rabbi Meir, and one Kula over Rabbi Meir. The Chumra over Rabbi Meir's opinion is that you can't even carry from one roof to another roof. Rabbi Meir would say you could. Rabbi Meir says it's the same usage. According to Rabbi Meir, usage is the issue. According to the Chachamim, usage is an issue, but not when you're going from roof to roof. Roof to roof is like house to house. According to the Chacham, however, they don't hold that height is a problem. So therefore, height to height is not, uh, if you're to move from different height, Rosh Hashanah is not a problem, and therefore you're allowed to go from roof to Chatzar, or from Chatzar to roof. You're also allowed to go from Chatzar to Chatzar, because like Reb Meir, they hold that as long as it's within one Rosh one type of Rosh it's okay, except for um, roof to roof. And Karfi to Karfi, if you're allowed to, but Karfi to Karfi to anything else, you can't because, again, they hold that that's a different type of usage. You can't go from a different type of usage to another. Now the Gemara wants to bring a Raya to Rabbi Yehuda. And the Gemara is going to bring a Raya to Rabbi Shimon, according to Rabbi Yehuda. That Rabbi Yehuda is right in his understanding of Rabbi Shimon, who said you're allowed to go from any region to any region. The Gemara says the story that uh, Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda announced, he said we were learning by Rabbi Shimon in a Tekoa. And we needed to bring oil and a towel to the bathhouse. And what do we do? We went, we carried it from roof to roof, from chutzah to chutzah, from chutzah to roof, from roof to chutzah, from chutzah to karfif, from karfif to another karfif. To avoid walking to Shasar Rabbim, we did all these things that we walked from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah while carrying, and Rosh Shimon didn't say it's Asr. So you see, Rabbi Yehuda is correct. Rabbi Shimon holds you allowed to carry from any type of Rosh Hashanah to another. Now, Rabbi Yehuda, the um, Tana, says, this is not Rabbi Huda who said this explanation, this is Rabbi Huda that Tana, he says, it was once a time of Sakana, it was dangerous to read from the Torah. In order to be able to do that, so we had to sneak a Torah around, so what we did was, is we carried a Torah from a Chatzah to a roof, from a roof to a Chatzah, from a Chatzah to a Karfeif, in order to be able to read. So you see, again, Rabbi Shimon holds you allowed to do that, because nobody said we're not allowed to. So Gemara says, not a proof, it was a Shasa Sakana, Shasa Sakana, these are Suri Darabonon, you can't necessarily prove anything from that. Okay, now the Gemara says that Allah is like Rabbi Shimon, you're allowed to carry from any region, from any Rosh Hashanah to another, besides four from a house into any other one. Um, and that also obviously includes any Kli which began Shabbos in a house and was later moved out to Chatzah, so you can't carry that further into any other Rosh Hashanah. And that's the Allah. Now the Gemara says is Rav against Rav uh, Yechanan and Shmuel. Is this referring to when there was an air of Chatzeris between a house and Chatzah or not? So Rav says. This, this is only true when there's no air of chatzers between the house and the chatzer. That way no object can come out of the house into the chatzer. We don't have to worry. You may end up carrying that object, which came from a house, from this chatzer into a further chatzer. That would be aser. Um, and therefore, it's, it's only mutter to carry from chatzer to chatzer, or from chatzer to any other rishos, if there's no air of chatzeris and you can't bring anything, meaning there's no air of chatzeris between the house and the chatzer, referring to where the house and the chatzer belong to different people, or the chatzer is jointly owned. And in order to carry from the house to the chatzer, you have to have an area of chatzeris. And Rav says, in a situation where you need an area of chatzeris, and there isn't one, that's what Rav Shimon says you're allowed to carry into an adjoining Rosh Hashanah. Rav Yechanan and Shmuel say no, even if there is no need for an area of chatzeris, or there is an area of chatzeris, and you could have objects carried from the house 
into the chater, and those objects is definitely forbidden to go further. Nobody argues on that. You can't carry them into another Rishas Yachid. Rabbi Shimon still doesn't make Xerah. He says, those objects he can't carry out of this chater, but the objects which began Shabbos in the chater, you could. So Gemara now brings four proofs in this machlokis. First of all, the Gemara says, how could Rabbi Shimon, how could you say Rabbi Shimon won't make Xerah? You have two objects sitting in the chater. One's allowed to go to the next chater, one's not, because one started Shabbos in the chater, and one started Shabbos in the house. How people will get confused. How could you say not that way? So the Gemara says it's not a problem because we know Rav Shimon holds you don't make exera like that. Because we have another case. We have a case of three chateras lined up in a row, and the middle chater made an air of chateras with the two on this side. So now you're allowed to carry an object from the middle one to either of the outer ones, and from the outer ones to the middle one. But you can't carry an object that starts from the middle from one on the side all the way over to the other one on the other side. That means I could have two objects sitting in the middle chater. One started there, and one which came from an outer chater. One, the one which started in the middle chater is allowed to go to the other chater, not the one we referred to before. But the object which came from one chater, one outer chater, is not allowed to go to the other outer chater. So you have two objects sitting right there. One's allowed to go to an extra chater, one's not. Rav Shimon doesn't say that there's a gzera, you're not allowed to allow either of them. The Chacham Abu say there is such a gzera. Rav Shimon doesn't hold. So you see here he wouldn't have such a gzera either, and there shouldn't be a problem to say any of these things. Okay? Now the Gemara has a kasha from a brysa. The Bryce, uh, uh quotes from Shimon, and it says that uh, a roof, a chutzer, a karfei, if they're all considered to be one rishos, you're allowed to carry from one to the other. For that's only, however, the Bryce says, a kli which began Shabbos in one of these rishos. So if it began Shabbos in the house, then you can't carry it from the chutzer to another chutzer. So Rav Shesha says, hold on a second. If it began Shabbos in the house, and we're talking about a situation where there's no air of chutzerois, how did it get into the chutzer? Rav Shimon is saying you're not allowed to carry it from this chaser to another chaser because this started Shabbos in the house. How did it get out of the house? It must be that Rav Shimon is talking about a case where there's no problem taking it out of the house. It's a proof to uh, to to Shmuel and to Rav Yechanan, even though there's no problem of carrying from the house to the chaser because either you have an air of chaseris or you don't need one because it all belongs to one person, you're still allowed to carry further. So the Gemara says he answered it himself. He says, not necessarily right. It could be that it came out of the house because it's an article of clothing. Somebody was wearing it when he left the house. He took it off and put it down in the chutzer. And now that, Rav Shimon says, um, it's not that it's allowed to go further. But it could be talking about a situation where there is no air of chutzeris between the house and the chutzer. And if there would be one, then Rav Shimon would say that it's forbidden like uh, Rav holds. Okay, the Gemara now brings its third raya. And this is a brysa and a mishnah which we've been discussing at length in the last shidaf. It's talking about where you have a chutzer joining a marpeset. Marpeset is a veranda. It's like a upper level courtyard. It's on a higher floor and it, it provides access to a number of houses which open onto a second floor. So second floor houses have this uh, courtyard which is called a veranda. And then there's a chutzer which is the outer yard for the houses on the ground floor. And the the merpeset, the veranda, and the chutzer are joined by a ladder. So what's the halacha? They're considered to be separate vishiyos and uh, something which is has height, which is sitting in the chutzer, but it's close to the yard. So who's allowed to use that object? Right? If you have a hill or a pillar or something. So he said if it's 10 Tvachim high and it's within 4 Tvachim of the Merpeset, then it belongs to the people of the Merpeset, the veranda. If it's shorter or if it's further away, it belongs to the people of the Chatzar. But what's clear here is that the Chatzar and the veranda are considered to be separate Rishuis. You can't carry from one to the other. And therefore, we have to figure out all these objects in the Chatzar, where do they belong to? Um, they're, where are they usable by? Are they usable for the upper people or for the lower people? So, they go, so the Bryce says that the, this whole situation is only when there was uh, an Erev, Chatzeros, that was made between the houses and these yards, between the house and the yard, or between the upper houses and the veranda. In a situation like that, you have a problem because they're considered to be separate Rishuis. However, if there was need for an air of Chatseris and there wasn't one, meaning it was jointly owned and they forgot to make one, then you have no problem because everything is considered, all the outer areas are considered to be one Rishuis. The roof, the Chatser, the Chsadra, the pavilion, the are all considered to be one Rishuis. You're allowed to carry from one to the other. 
obviously no objects can come out of the houses then and they carry from one to the other. So here you clearly see that there's a brysa. It doesn't say who wrote it, but it's got to be Rav Shimon. Who else would say that you're allowed to carry from one to the other? And they clearly say that you're allowed to carry from one area to the other um, as long as there's no Eruv allowing you to carry out of the house. So you don't have to worry about objects coming out of the house and then being transferred further from one Rosh Hashanah like a Chatzah to another one. So you're allowed to. So clearly Rabbi Shimon holds that the only time that it's much to carry from one region to another is where uh, no objects could come out of the house because there's no area of Chatzah joining the house to the Chatzah. Okay. So Gemara says, good Raya, but it's, uh, it's not Rabbi Shimon. This is the Chachamim. The Chachamim also hold you're allowed to go from Rosh to Rosh The only thing they said is you can't go from roof to roof. Here we're not talking about roofs. So you, they say you're allowed to go from a, a Chatzar to a Chsadra to a Merpeset to a, all these things. There's no problem there. And we know that the Chachamim hold that we do make such a Gzera. Back in the case of the three courtyards near each other, they hold you can't carry from the middle one to either of the outer ones because you make a Gzera. People are going to get confused. So here, they, they hold of such a Gzera. So the, that's this this Brisa is them. Rabbi Shemin doesn't hold of Gzera like that. As a matter of fact, the Gemara says, if you look carefully at this Brisa, it's clear that it has to be them because it doesn't mention Karfev. A Karfev is... A different Rishos, you wouldn't be able to carry from a Karfiv to either of these other ones, according to the Chachamim. Reb Shimon would say you can. Reb Shimon says it's not considered a different. He holds usage, the fact that it's not used as often as these other ones is not a problem. It doesn't say Karfiv. It mentions all kinds of Rishos. You, say, oh, you can transfer from one to the other, but not Karfiv. So it's clear that this is the Chachamim. This is not at all um, Reb Shimon. Okay, we now have the fourth raya. In order to understand the fourth raya, we have to keep in mind that a karfev and a mavoi have the same amount of usage. People don't really use either of them. Therefore, as far as these halachas, a mavoi will count as a karfev. So the Bryce says you have five courtyards all lined up in a row, and they all open to each other, and they all open to a mavoi. So what's the halacha? So the machoik is between the chachamim and Rabbi Shimon, the Gemara says. What exactly are the opinions? So the chachamim say as follows. If nobody made an Erev, um, so you're not allowed to carry from the Chatzar to a Mavi or from a Mavi to a Chatzar, because the Mavi is a Karfeif, and uh, without an Erev Chatzar, so you can't carry between a Karfeif and a Chatzar. Now, uh, from Chatzar to Chatzar, you're allowed to carry, um, because, like the Chum hold, that's not a problem. They hold you don't need an Erev for that. That's referring to things which start at Shabbos in the Chatzar, of course. And within the Mavi, you're not allowed to carry. The Gemara will explain why that is. It shouldn't be, but the Gemara will explain how that works. Now, Rib Shimon says, not true. As long as they were supposed to make an Erev, meaning it belongs to multiple people, and they didn't make an Erev, then you're allowed to carry. You're allowed to carry from Chatzar to Ruf, or to Achsadra, or to Merpeset, or to Karfif, or to Mavi. All these places you're allowed to carry from one Shasiyach to another, no problem. Now, the Gemara says, look what he said. He said, as long as you're missing an Erev. So, obviously, he holds. The only reason you're allowed to carry from one Rosh to another is because you're missing an Erev and you can't have anything from the house out in the Chatzar. Otherwise, he would make Xerah and say you can't carry because you may end up carrying something which came from the house into the Chatzar. You'll end up carrying it further. So clear proof to the opinion of Rav. So this is not necessarily. When we say we, we didn't make an Erev, when we say that the only time you're allowed is, is if there's uh, no Erev. We're not talking about an Erev between the house and the Chatzar. No. He would say, as Allah, even if you did have an air between the house and the chutzr, and you have Kalim from the house hanging around in the chutzr, they're not allowed to go further. And he still doesn't make exer. What does he mean when he says, if you didn't make an air? He means, even though you didn't make an air between the chutzeros to be able to carry from one to the other, I'm telling you that you're allowed to carry from one to the next. And this is Rabbi Shimon's shita. His shita is that you're allowed to carry. He's coming to make the point. You're allowed to carry even from the chutzr to the mavi, which the chachamim argued on without an air. The chachamim would say you would have to have an air of. Uh, you would have to have a Shetufei Mavois in order to be able to carry from the Erev, from the Chatzar to the Mavoy. And that's his point. But he's certainly talking even in a situation where there is an Erev between the house and the Chatzar, and you could have Kalem from the house sitting in the Chatzar, and there's no Gzera, you may end up carrying them further. Says the Gemara, but what do you mean? He said there's Loi Ervu. His phrase is, they didn't make an Erev. It sounds like they didn't make any Erev. How are you telling that he's talking about if they didn't, that even if they made an error from the house to the chutzar, the implication here is as long as they didn't make any error. But if you did make some error, even just from the house to the chutzar, you wouldn't allow it. So the says, no, when it says they didn't make an error, it means they didn't make a shetufim mevoyis. Shetufim mevoyis is sometimes called error. They didn't make any shetufim mevoyis at all. That's what he means to say. You're allowed to carry anyway. You don't need one. 
You don't even like his opinion is. Now the Gemara says, I'll give you a second answer. The Gemara says, really, Rib Shimon holds, you're allowed to carry even if you have, even if you have um, uh, an Erev between the house and the Chatzar, you're allowed to carry. What he said, even that you're allowed to carry when there's no Erev, he meant to say, he's talking to the Chachamim in their first opinion. He said, listen, he was saying, Chachamim, I understand that you want to make Xera that you're not allowed to carry from Chatzar to Chatzar because you may have objects from the house that came out into the Chatzar because there's no Erev. But at least agree to me this far that at least if you do have a situation where you can't have any objects from the house and the chutzur, like if they forgot to make an air of chutzur between the house and the chutzur, so at least agree to me that you're allowed to carry from chutzur to chutzur. That much you should agree. Why do you have a problem with that? And he really, Rabbi himself would go further. He's just saying, this far, I do think you should agree to me. And Gemara now turns its attention to the last line, um, which was written after the Chachamim's opinion, that says, within the Mavli itself, it's usher to carry. And Gemara says, why, why should be usher to carry within the Mavli? Because this must be a proof to Rabbi Zera. And Rabbi Zera says, if you have a mavoi with a shetufi mavoi, so you're not even allowed to carry an object from one end of the mavoi to the other. You're allowed to carry within four amas, because it's a caramelist. But it has a lach of a karmas, you're not allowed to carry throughout the mavoi itself, even not out of the mavoi. Because there's no shetufi mavoi made. This seems to be a proof to him. It says you're not allowed to carry within the mavoi. So Gemara is not a proof. When it says within the Mavi, it meant from the Chatzar to the Mavi. It, the language is imprecise. It means from the Chatzar to the Mavi or vice versa. It doesn't mean in the Mavi. It means to the Mavi. Which is what I mean. But that that's a repetition of what the Chacham said before. The Chacham said you're not allowed to carry from the Chatzar to the Mavi. So you know that's that's a like a karfev. This is like a rishas yachad. Why repeat it? So Gemara says no. We're repeating it because there's two halachas here. The Chacham were saying first of all you're not allowed to carry from a Chatzar to a Mavi because it's different levels of usage and you have to have an eruv. And um, it's like carrying from a chatzah to a karfev. The second thing is, don't think that I only said that in a situation where you might have kalim from the house found in the chatzah and I'm making a gzera. Even without that, even besides, there's two problems. First of all, from the f- fact that it's from a chatzah to a mavi, which is like a karfev. And that's besides the fact that you could also have a that you may end up carrying from an object which started out in the house and went to the chutzar, and then it's going to end up being carried to the mobile. Besides for that, even if you have an object which started in the chutzar, it's still so. Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzchak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.